I got an email yesterday from my very favourite teacher. I loved lots of teachers, just <laughs> in case anybody's listening. But my absolute <laughs> favourite teacher. All teachers. Yeah, hashtag all teachers. But my absolute favourite teacher, my English teacher. And she shall remain nameless, although actually that was a bit of a dead giveaway. But anyway, she wrote to me yesterday and she said she's been listening to the podcast and she was in stitches about the part about the balloons, which I have to say, Rosemary, makes me think that was a bit callous. Everybody was in stitches at the part with the balloons. But I think like like loads of people messaged me about it actually and were going, God, that must have been awful. But I laughed so much at you telling your sister because she was in such convulsions. You know, I think it's really unfair. You know how much I like all this feedback and interaction with people. And you never tell me about these messages that you receive. And I would love to hear about every single one of them. I am in communication with you for currently, I'd say, at least three hours of every day speaking about reviews, chart positions, reviews, <laughs> how many downloads we've got on any given day. And then there's a nightly phone call. Are we doing well? Are we doing better than last week? Are we doing better than yesterday? So I think actually You're letting me down. Poor I'm giving you a lot of my time. Poor mom and dad. You know, luckily, actually, we asked them. Luckily, they can track the charts for us now because it'll give us a reason to call them. <laughs> <laughs> Joke, mom and dad. JK. Poor mom. You know, a friend of mine texted me the other day and said, oh my God, I just got this text from mom and I was laughing my head off. He had an accident and ended up being in hospital overnight and mom had texted him and said, you know, I heard about what happened. I hope you're okay. No need to reply. She didn't spell it out for him. No need to reply. Well, he was in hospital. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. He did. She didn't want him overthinking or taxing his brain. Yeah, but I mean, like when you're in hospital, what else have you got to be doing? So you're Rosemary. You're Beatrice. And this is Not Without My Sister. Feel, I don't feel like I can sing anymore. I used to enjoy singing the theme tune. <laughs> but then after then? you laughed so much after my... <laughs> <laughs> no, then, you, then we hurt ourselves. <laughs> we weren't... I don't think anybody else was we supposed were, to hear that. It didn't help we were totally out of sync as well. <laughs> <laughs> Not as bad as the counting. <laughs> Sometimes I think that our producer, Liam... Like when he goes through our podcast and edits it, he's literally like, how can I make these two idiots sound I agree stupid? because the last one I listened to I mean, it's not the, that hard to be fair. The last one I listened to the extremely poor accounting and I was like, nobody was supposed to hear that. Any editor worth his or her salt would know that in order to make us seem extremely intelligent, nearly... You need oh, a lot of nearly, editing. Nearly everything needs to be edited. <laughs> it just needs to be classical music and the odd word. Yeah, and a couple of things like Dr. Tomas. Some cultural references. Dr. I love Tomas. how you pick your cultural My reference. Obsession. I made lots of cultural references in the last episode. I can't remember any of their names, so you know I can't remember anything. I talked about uh, Dr. Death on Wondery. The podcast. Oh, very good. Have you listened to any good podcasts lately? I've listened to yours. I, okay, but I, like... I, yeah, for which I texted you every three seconds, so, so it wasn't so relaxing because I kept It wasn't relaxing for me either. I listened to Joe Rogan, which I was horrified to discover was three hours long. But only after an hour and a half, I was like, when is this thing over? And I listened to H3. What's that? It's the one Don told me I need to listen to. But I only got about 10 minutes in. I've only gotten about 10 minutes in. So I don't know what it's about yet. And you listened to Liam's episode of Meet Your Maker. I did. That was brilliant. The one about Don Bluth. Yeah. Yeah, that was very good. Very interesting, actually. Very Irish. It was adorable. And I loved the bit where they were like talking about how loads of Irish people moved over to LA and they were like... I mean, the cultural differences. Oh, yeah, they all hated it. It was a desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) It was brilliant. Yeah, there was no, what were they all saying? Like, there was no cultural or like nightlife, as in they didn't hang out after work. They all just drove back to their houses and they were all given out about the driving as well. They were like, nobody walked anywhere. But it was like when I lived in Dallas and like part of it was also that they mentioned that the downtown, nobody hangs out in downtown. But like, that's very American, you know, apart from the big, big cities, like people hang out in small suburbs or like this. and And you very specifically pick where you live. Because that's the suburb you that's want to hang out That's the area you're going to hang out, yeah. yeah. But like downtown Fort Wayne is kind of trying to create that more downtown. They're trying to do it. I mean, there's they? a lot more here than even there was in downtown yeah, yeah, Dallas. Yeah. Like downtown yeah. Dallas was absolutely dead. I remember we moved there, Don and I drove downtown on a Sunday morning. And I was like, oh, we we'll find some great brunch spot now. But literally there was nothing. And then at one point, tons of people piled out of this place. And I was like, oh my God, that must be so popular. And Don's like, it's a church. Oh, I thought you were going to say it was Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> but I was reading place. about um, your man Robert Sheehan in the Irish Times. They were saying he was in his house in our apartment in London and 
he said the same thing. He just moved back from LA and he was saying basically it was too much driving and it was just too kind of not soulless is wrong, but he said you, he, he said you'd miss the crack. You'd miss, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he and I thought it was interesting as well. He said you'd miss the language, but the the cultural language. Mm-hmm. And like I always talk about that because I really feel like it's that shared history, that the you shared just understanding. Don't have, yeah. yeah, that's just totally different. Yeah, Robert Sheen is very good in the in the Umbrella Academy. I haven't seen by it the yet, way. but he was good in was it Misfits. He was in Misfits and he was also in Love Hate. You didn't watch that, though, did you? I didn't you? watch that. Is the dog actually snoring? No, she stopped. Okay. Oh, she's a dote. She's a dote. I'd love to be snoring right now. Okay, so go back to our teacher. Who... So today we are going to talk about... Oh, yeah, school. And how excellent we were. <laughs> That's I what you're going to say, how excellent it was. No, I was basically like, I have no stories to tell because I was a massive nerd. I was extremely good all the time, never did anything. The dog actually sounds like she's just making a noise of like, shut up, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> For <laughs> God's sake. <laughs> what, what's your favourite memory of school? I didn't really like school. Like secondary school. Yeah. I was very like introverted and shy and it sounds ridiculous, but I was like a mom got a phone call from the teacher saying like, is Beatrice okay? Like she really never talks. She's very, I know it's true. I mean, I was massive. I was massively tall and awkward. Do you know what I mean? And then I did transition year. You mentioned that in one of the previous Mm -hmm. um, episodes. And that was like a whole new world for me. A whole new world. Jesus. For anybody who's not familiar with the Irish school system, which will be approximately 1% of our listeners, (laughs) it's divided into the junior cycle where you do your first set of kind of junior exams. and You do first, second and third year with that curriculum. And then the senior cycle is meant to be fifth and sixth year. And you can choose to do an optional fourth year. Now, most schools now, it's mandatory. Is it? Yeah, most secondary schools in Ireland. I think think even at the time, our school was quite unusual in that like a lot of my friends say where Claire went to school, it was mandatory. A lot of people I knew had like had oh yeah to do no it. I know some people did but I didn't know that it was increasingly um required well I I enjoyed that a lot like and the you know you mentioned before the freedom and being treated mm-hmm. like an adult and, and just like doing really interesting things like yeah. getting to explore the subject outside of the curriculum which is well, quite I really do think that there was like an engagement with the teachers where they actually talked to you like you were a normal person and like they had conversations with you and yeah. like, you'd ask a question and they'd ask a question back you know and then you went back in fifth year and it was like you know Sir, I was wondering if, turn around, sit down in your seat. I I had a, well, I mean, maybe I was like pretty bold at that point. But I mean, but, I was really good before that. You know, it's funny. I was obviously not introverted and not quiet at all at any stage of my life. No, because you, for for you were organizing my desire. The school rallies and okay. school clubs. No, I was never organizing any school rallies in secondary school. Oh. It was, it was in primary school. Sh- no, no, it was in primary I'm school that I was very sure. into organising clubs. Well, we'll have to get that letter from mom. The one where like you... Oh, that was when I was like nine. I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, but that was yeah, the yeah, beginning was of it. School. That was the beginning yeah, of it. Yeah, but like secondary school... So when I went into secondary school, I wasn't part of any popular crowd or I wasn't... So I had no power to organise, is what I'm saying. You always have power to organise. No, no, I didn't. But what I was going to say was, even though I wasn't introverted and I wasn't quiet, I also didn't like secondary school. Well, I'd say, to be fair, you didn't have time to organise because you were too busy dating people. You literally have had a boyfriend since the age of five. You, list, you just don't let me to live, like, you don't let me live my truth. <laughs> you have this interpretation of my life that you... It's true. Whitewash you over everything. You said it yourself, it's true. There's nothing wrong with that. I was four and a half. Oh, there you go. I would have loved to have had boyfriends. All my life, it wasn't for lack of trying. Oh, or lack you of wanting. Really yeah, yeah. Lack of wanting then, lack of desiring, lack of wish, wishfully sitting at home reading Anne of Green Gables and every Jane Austen book on repeat sobbing into my pillow like it sounds I know you sound like a catch (laughs) I'm shocked that you weren't snapped up by someone (laughs) and in my spare time I could be found making doll's house furniture painting and walking and reading reading and sobbing basically was about it (laughs) and wondering where your favourite dog had gone (laughs) (laughs) so mean so mean but I mean honestly I I actually remember very little about most of those years except I remember nearly every, like all the books I read were just amazing you know what I mean I love I mean I read so much yeah the only books I can actually think of from school are Jimmy Moorhaig and On Trail were like our two the Irish texts that were from about 1820 and we were forced to read Oh, I just meant like in my life reading. Oh, well, we read. Uh, I know, I know, but like I just can't think of anything that I read outside of school. Oh, we read. So Rolls I was too busy here. My hanging out my boyfriend's. That was brilliant. Oh, oh we didn't read that. Um, I think we read, we read To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, we read To Kill a Mockingbird, and we read Wuthering Heights, which was brilliant and so like 
I actually don't even remember any books that I read in secondary school. Oh my God, I, I was looking out across the gorse and the fields and going, where's my Heathcliff standing in the rain? I mean, Heathcliff's not a great... No, I know, I know. But listen, I wasn't. didn't exactly I have know, a load of... Beggars you know, and choosers, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but so go on, so you talked a lot. Well, I mean, I think I was going to say, I went from primary school where... So I'd obviously been in, like like anybody, I've been in primary school for eight years, but I felt like so comfortable and as if I knew all the teachers and, you know, like I felt like I could really talk to them. Like, especially because our principal in our primary school in School Crown On, Brenda McKenna, was probably like one of the most, I don't want to say amazing, but like impressive. Yes. Progressive. She was very progressive. Progressive and impressive and empathic and just like I loved her so much even yeah. though I was also scared of her like she, I yeah, never wanted was, to get in trouble yeah she was a very unusual teacher I remember myself and my friend Baven used to go into her class like we she used to call us in as we were you know the photo it was funny like actually the photo the only photocopier in the building was in her office yeah and so we'd have to go in like we'd be sent off to make photocopies we'd love to be asked to do the photocopy oh my god we loved it we'd be sent off to make the photocopies and when we were in there then we would reenact for her a full scene from the nest cafe ads where there was i remember at the time the nest cafe ads were like this you know she would knock on the door do you have a i've run out of coffee and then the two of them, oh, yeah. there was this like kind of romantic thing, and we would act it out for her while we were waiting for the for the copies. <laughs> she was hilarious though, but like she is really interesting, and she has doesn't she have her own TV program now, or like she she makes documentaries and stuff? Yeah, she does for um, TG Car. Yeah, she's very interesting. I remember going to her to talk to her about how my mom wouldn't let me get a bra, and I was one of the only girls in sixth class who did not have a bra, and it was really upsetting me. Did you need one? I don't know if I didn't. I was, I, I don't know, like, like my tits developed quickly, but late. Mom doesn't like to, I mean, in fairness, I would say mom just did not really believe that you actually wanted to go and suffer the indignity of being measured. That's like mom's <laughs> absolute nightmare. Sorry, mom. <laughs> she doesn't even like trying on I'd clothes. I'd say mom, if she had her choice, would have like bound our chests and kept us in age 10 clothes for our entire lives. bound her own chest. Oh, well, maybe. <laughs> I'd say she wouldn't mind that either. But no, like I'd say she would happily have kept us as children for like little children. I would have forever. been a very flat chested monster. <laughs> that would have been really, really it's cruel. Mom's greatest disappointment was like, why is she so big? She's I know. A baby. I guarantee that was her biggest disappointment. Well, one of her biggest disappointments. But basically, then when we went to secondary school, I think I found it really jarring. I mean, as well, because we had different teachers for each subject, it felt like you you never really got to know anyone or you never really got comfortable with anyone in the way that I was used to. And I found that really hard. I mean, obviously, like, I was not... I mean, what I'm thinking about now, I'm like, obviously, I was a bit of a nerd. If, like, the main thing that I think about is, like, oh, I was such great friends with my teachers in primary <laughs> yeah, school. And secondary then, school Secondary school disaster. didn't give me a chance to befriend them. Like, <laughs> what? They're all listening, rolling their eyes. Uh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you know what? One of my teachers who taught us Irish, I think, now follows me on Facebook and Instagram and sometimes messages me. So we're like besties now. Oh, it's nice. I know. But it's weird to me. Like, hmm. I think it was weird to me when I, when I got the first, like the first time I ever noticed that she was following me, the first time I ever interacted with her, I was like, oh, oh my God, a teacher in the wild. Do you know what I mean? It felt yeah, kind yeah. of like, oh, like we're on the same internet. We're on the same, like, which I didn't, it had never occurred to me before that we we're both human beings in the world. Like this was years ago. I hope defense. this was many years ago. It was. You know, you're reminding me though, like I think one of the big things was, and now obviously living in America, I don't think our school was massive, but going from a small, like 30 classroom school in primary school. 30 students. Yes. Oh yeah, precisely. Year, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 30 people in a classroom. Maximum, um, yeah. Yeah. To, what was there then? Like there was like 120 in a like year, I think. six, right? Oh, six. yeah, maybe 108, because it was 850 yeah. in the whole yeah. school, I think. Like, I just remember going, this is way, like, yeah. so massive. You're, you're such a, you know, an anonymous individual. Yeah. I mean, I... You probably weren't because you were so tall. <laughs> <laughs> Where everybody knows your name. But I do remember, like, and I remember being, because I was really shy, and I remember being mortified, like, ever being asked to put my hand up and I, I think part of what was hard as well was like you know you had your 30 people in your base classes like in your core mm-hmm, classes mm-hmm. and then you'd be with a different 30 and totally a different, random and people, that was yeah. always really like I hated it so much and I remember like I'm still traumatized by this in first year too many people applied to do technology which was a new class at the time 
So they went around with little pieces of paper or straws. I think it was like sticks of st- spaghetti. I can't remember. And then one of them was short, of course. And they went around and made everybody pull one out to see because it was 31 people had opted mm-hmm. in and only 30 spaces in the classroom. And of course, which giant chose the ironically short straw? Me. What did you have to do instead? Engineering was a nightmare. I thought you liked engineering. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. The I, fairest, I thought you were just like happy with your oh, lot and you were miserable. The fairest percentage of this iron versus that iron. I literally was like, oh, give me, me that the fairest, iron. And I was like, that's very dangerous. No, I was like, give me that iron so I could poke my eyes out with it. It was absolutely the most boring thing ever. Although like, I had a very nice, pleasant teacher. And I think I there was part of me that felt like very liberated you know like I felt like I was doing great things for womankind by a wearing trousers when they were just new to the school and b well and I could barely like find them so that was a miracle in and of itself and then b doing all of these classes because I also did technical drawing that were you know typically male classes I love technical drawing I don't even remember technical drawing being an option when I was there I loved it but I obviously have very limited memories of of school like as we've discovered around like we didn't do any sports and you're like no you just didn't do them oh my god sports Sports. Well, that was what I actually hated the most. Like the absolute worst sports person yeah. you've ever met in Because your life. actually, do you remember in primary school? Now, this is terrible when I think about it now, right? But in primary school, once a week or twice a week, the boys used to go out to play GAM. and we used to do cross stitch. I do remember. So and I was I not loved set up it. for success. No, neither. What? But like, well, I loved cross stitch. I hated the sexism of it. And like at one stage, I started. I think to, you did a petition against At one stage, that, I you? tried to set up a GA <laughs> team, but we were so bad. Because we also <laughs> never got any training. Like we were terrible. But we did go out for sports in primary school too. Yeah, yeah. We went across to the Halla and we did a bit of like bouncing around. But the boys, either once or twice a week, the boys who were on the football team, which was all the boys, got taken out and we would do either cross stitch or we would do knitting. Oh, we did do lumber wood rugs though. I loved that. We I hated the knitting. That. We did the lumber rugs and that was brilliant. But now you're making me think I'd forgotten about. I also, in primary school, as a large... There, you know, there's some uses to being extremely large and tall, big and tall, as your boyfriend likes to say. <laughs> what is it? Is that what it's, that what it's called? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I he, was. He just likes to talk. Like, you'll go like, "Why don't you get something?" Like, it'd be, st- it'd be stupid. He'd be like, "Why don't you get a pair of those socks?" He's like, "They don't do them in my size." You're like, "Get an actual grip." Socks, <laughs> socks are stretchy. Like, <laughs> socks are stretchy. No, they also ridiculous. have big size socks. Of course, they you're do. You're not actually a, ba- a basketball player. No offense, Brandon. You're extremely six foot five. Lo- you could be a basketball you're player. Lo- I know, but he's not. And I'm. But my point is, there are lots of people who are six foot something. He's not swift enough for basketball. <gasps> That's really mean. <laughs> I'm not a fast runner either. <laughs> oh, I know you're I'm sure not. Faster. I'm not a fast runner either. However, I was put to good use at the far end of the tug of war. Uh, and I was, my teacher, I was on the tug of war team and we traveled around Ireland. She really? We did. And we competed. And I was the secret weapon. The one time in my life I was, oh, because that also reminds me of the time when we went swimming and I didn't, had never somehow learned to dive. Everybody dove in and I just jumped straight to the bottom and then came up and watched everybody else tip the pool at the far end while I was like still surfacing and I had to swim the entire length. And afterwards I was like, how did nobody ever teach me to dive? Or like, how did I never think to learn? <laughs> See, that's that's like me in the 100 meter race, except for I had the wits to to get off the track. You should have just got out of the pool. I wouldn't have been able to climb out the side. No offense, oh, it's yeah, never a point. skill I mastered either. Right. I could only no, get out of the good. Ladder. You still can't do that. <laughs> still Terrible. Do I did it the other day. No, you didn't. You basically pushed yourself out of the water and you went, okay, I could do that in an emergency. <laughs> and then you got back in again. <laughs> I do change that, that in your memory to yes, I got out. I did. <laughs> oh god. But anyway, yeah, so I was the secret weapon on the tug of war team. So the teacher used to tie the big rope around my waist, double, triple knot, and make sure it was extremely secure, and then everybody else would file up, you know, and then we would all be tugging the rope, etc. That sounds terrible. <laughs> our face, we would all be pulling, right? Yeah. Okay, Jesus, never mind. We'd be pl- we'd be playing the game. They'd say start, right? We'd all we'd be, be playing the game. Oh we'd all be pulling God. in tandem is fine. We would all Tugging be pulling the rope in- is a bit much. <laughs> we'd all be pulling in tandem. <laughs> and then anyway, at one point, my teacher would just turn around and he would go, drop! Uh, in an Irish accent, obviously, more like, drop! <laughs> <laughs> You're and absolutely I- giving away who that was as oh, well. Oh, right, yeah, exactly. And I would just fall like straight back like a dead weight. And we... Never lost. <laughs> it was so humiliating. I just had to like poke her straight, just fall but, back. But like, did you enjoy being on the team? You didn't have to do it though, did you? 
I don't know that I mean were you ever asked age 9 age 10 do you want to be on I thought this we were team talking about secondary school. oh no this was primary school I was saying oh. that reminded me my my glory days were behind me by the time I got to secondary school do you remember school. any sp- <laughs> do you remember any sports days in secondary school yeah I absolutely dreaded it. I mean oh, yeah. oh oh god just remember it. that was so terrible because I used to hate PE and mom yeah. used to dread Thursdays which was PE day for me how do you remember it was Thursday because I dreaded it every Wednesday night. I would cry myself to sleep. I'd get up in the morning. I'd nearly throw the up. Absolutely dramatic. It's true. I, I would know. actually be actively like nauseous all the way there in the car. And then mom would be like, come on, you're fine. It's just, you have to be careful. Buckle up, basically. And then you had to put these tiny little bibs on. You know, the little bibs that were pre knotted. And they've been there and for like 47 decades. I don't remember the smell. I just remember the smell of them. So bad. And one time I squoze it onto me. I couldn't get it off after the game of basketball. And Mr. Whatever his name was, no offense, can't remember his name, had to come over to me. Oh, he I had to go him. into the storage closet. Hold on there, Beatrice. Go into the storage closet slowly, in slow motion, and then come back out with a massive scissors that he then used to cut the bib <laughs> shears. off me. A shears that he then used to cut the bib off my swollen flesh. And only swollen, like not swollen during the game, like just chubby. No, but you probably were a bit swollen because you got hot. I'm sure I wasn't, but, yeah. but thanks. Absolutely. It's so humiliating. And I just remember like the cool girl in the class like chuckling oh. as she, you know. Oh, hang on. He cut it off in front of everyone. He cut it off in front oh. of everyone. But I mean, also they could see that I was stuck in the vest. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. No wonder, like poor They me. literally should have sent you to the office and then you should have been allowed to take two weeks off and they should have said you had a terrible allergic reaction. That seems a bit dramatic, but yeah, yeah. but like that would have been a good way of because so like, embarrassing. That is such an embarrassing thing for a teenager to go through in front of everyone. They could have been, but like men would never think of that. No, no, and I was Ireland. So oh, I'm sure she's awful. Grand. She's grand. I remember, like I used to hate PE as well. Similarly, not athletic. Surprise, surprise. But I remember I tried out for the basketball team. I think mostly because like a lot of cool girls I wanted to be friends with were on the basketball team, and I just wanted to hang out with them. And I remember I didn't make it. I didn't make the team. And I thought that was really mean. Even at the time, I was like, yeah. would they not just have said yes and then kept me on the bench, played me for like two minutes a game? Like, I like I would have been wrecked. I would have been like, fine, that two minutes is all I need. My God. But it's like, what was, is it, was it ice hockey or like hockey? Wasn't, there was no ice. Oh, the thing, oh, the thing with the puck. Yeah. Hockey, oh, okay. that was brutal. I'd like to say we are, these are not sport professionals. That thing with the puck. <laughs> hockey, yes. The puck. Yeah, the puck. Oh, yeah. And it was and brutal. It would whack off your no, shins. No, but like, I mean, I think the reason I was never... Go- okay, there were many reasons I was never good at sport. But You like, were too far away from the puck. No, well, I was going to say... You're so I was tall. So, no, I was just oh. so afraid of the puck. Every time it came near me, I would get into such a massive heap. It was similar to like how I talk about when if a zombie, you know... Oh, yeah. If a zombie apocalypse ever happened. Like, a zombie apocalypse. L- literally... <laughs> literally just count me out like I just might as well lie down and be devoured on day one because there is zero way I will be able to ever run from a zombie I just freeze sheer terror but you know what I'm the exact same with football as soon as somebody tries and now and and I mean people didn't pass the ball to me very often (laughs) but as soon as the ball comes near me I go running away I'm like don't hit me that was it. I never got picked for sports teams. I'm like, oh, why yeah. do they do that? Why don't they just don't go, know. you six over there and you six yeah. over there? Rosemary, why don't you pick your six best friends and then they can pick their six best friends and whoever's left will just look sorry for no, them. No, but also people didn't pick their six best friends. People, like in my year anyway, picked strategically. So they'd pick the people who were best at sport who no, they thought were going to win. I mean. You know what like, I mean? But also, awful. and your best friend. Yeah, and then of course you get left to the end. I don't know why. And like, also it's so unfair because... It means the teams aren't spread evenly. Why don't they just go, you're really tall, you go here. You're really tall, you go here. You're really big, you go here. You're really big, you go here. Are you you're being really th- personal right now? No, I mean, that was random really, really people. Personal. That was really specific. You were one of the really tall people and I was one of the bigger people. <laughs> like, And I was really tall and really big. I think actually we played dodgeball in transition here, which in hindsight seems ferociously dangerous. I did like volleyball. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is it. I was thinking about I was thinking about school today, right? And I was googling, I was googling the school because I was trying to remember the name of this one particular teacher, right? So I was googling the name of our school with like all possible combinations. And Beatrice, I found a picture of the volleyball team, and if I showed show you, if you could see the sass on these girls, Rosemary there wasn't the like I know, I know, but it was actually you just so funny that I was 90. no, no, they were the like official volleyball team. The basketball team definitely had uniforms. Did they? Yeah. Okay. In like a specific colour that they 
brought out from the back of the dustiest shed oh. every time they played in the well, then I def- official games. I think games. I thought I was on the volleyball team like <gasps> 20 years later. I was like, was it? <laughs> Like, I um, loved being on the volleyball team yeah. and they're all like, quick, get on the bus and make sure she doesn't see us. <laughs> Bint. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I was just remembering. I, I was in all the school musicals though. Hang on. How many school musicals were you in? I think it was only one. Maybe only one. <laughs> <laughs> that I, can remember. I think there was like, there was one school musical you did in your senior. There was one school musical, I think every two years. So yeah, like maybe you're you, right. Like you okay, either well, got I was to be in the choir. It. Went to did lots of singing in, in oh school. Oh my god, the choir! Yeah. I loved the choir. I we loved did the choir um, as well. We did Freddie Mercury. We did uh, we did none of that. We did Mama like Luli Lule. Oh, we did do all the leads of Brown, which I loved. But I I think maybe did we and have we different did, teachers for no, choir? We no. had the same teacher. Yeah, and we had we also did. We've only just begun. Oh, we didn't do that. You know, I got kicked out of the choir. Why? So at one stage, I don't know. Like, well, no, I mean, I I, I do know, but I'm. I don't know what exactly happened, but at one stage we had done three songs in a row that nobody liked and they were like, oh, we should ask, can we help pick the songs or can we vote on the songs or something? And I was like, great, I'll ask, can we? <laughs> what is wrong with me? And I and I asked the becoming, teacher, right? this but this is also thread. like, sorry, I was a child, right? Like I was obviously a precocious dickhead, but I was also a child. I don't know. It seems like a pretty reasonable request to me. So I went to the teacher and I asked you know, I said a few of us have been talking and we didn't really like the last couple of songs and we were wondering if from now on, like, could we maybe vote? You know, can we have a choice of a couple of songs? And she said, you know what, if you don't like how I'm doing it, you can leave and she kicked me out. But did she say you can leave or did she say leave? No, I think she said leave because I was I was so upset because like I loved the choir. It was the only extracurricular thing I did in school. And you never went back? I don't think so, no. But That's... that was also, that was in like either fifth or sixth year when I had my downward spiral. <laughs> towards like fine academic achievement but like nobody thought I was I, like everybody thought I was losing it were They're you like, losing it though well no I mean I just stopped respecting them <laughs> I think yeah, which is well, awful like, but like I do, well I do remember I, I stopped did, being as obedient basically I did home ec right oh no I was going to say anyway yeah I just remembered during the break there that I was in all these musicals and oh my god I remember thinking you were so cool in that musical oh when god, we came to see it remotely cool oh my god do you remember we came to I see it those pictures somewhere do you remember we came to see it and the director before the play was walking over the seats trying to get to something and Ursula our aunt Ursula was there and she gave out to him <laughs> and went excuse me what are you doing standing on that seat I could be putting my fur coat down there Oh and he said God. something like, well, don't. And just kept going. <laughs> oh my God, what is wrong with her? Well, no, I, and like none of the like clothing in the whatever, like dress up box in the school dress up box fit me. So my oh, my favorite teacher went and got her own clothes to dress me with. I mean, in hindsight, Beatrice, your favorite teacher, I think, probably was a little bit more petite of stature than you were. <laughs> so I wonder if she actually just bought you some big and no, tall clothes. Me. And told I lost you they were a lot hers. of weight in transition year. I know, I know, but like you, you were still tall and broad, slightly broad. No, I was very tall, but like I lost a lot of weight there. That no, no, year. no, no. Yeah, yeah, I know. No, no, no. You know I'm not, you, I'm not taking that away old. from you, but I'm just no, saying, like, now you're getting old. You weren't petite. I was extremely tall and petite. You were not. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that was very nice for. Her, but like, how mortifying! It was and I feel so like nice she, of her. she did it in a way that didn't make me feel like nothing would fit me. She, anyway, <laughs> she, she she didn't cut one of the costumes off in front of the rest of the class, basically. Well, exactly. I mean, it's pretty low bar. So what else did you do? What else I did d- you do after transition year? What was your favourite subject? Uh, probably English. I mean, I really liked art as well, but, and I'm not just like blowing smoke up your ass when I said this, I always had the like spectre of you, of you being really brilliant over my head. So like anything I did in art, I was always like, it's not as good as Beatrice, which is like in my head as well. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely in your head. No, but I mean, it actually wasn't. But it was like, because I mean, art's all different. You know what I mean? There are different types of art as well. Uh, yeah, but like some people are objectively better. And like if I was asked to draw a bowl of fruit and you were asked to draw a bowl of fruit, yours is better. I don't know. Our cousin Blaze, who is a professional artist, would say that anybody can draw. And you have to have to practice. It's all just practice. So maybe you mm-hmm. weren't willing to put in the practice. I Because I was too busy with my boyfriend. You, you were at home sketching nonstop. So I was. Else to do. I was. But I think this podcast has also taught us that I have an obsessive personality. And you potentially are more relaxed. Well, I, I actually would say that you have great drive and I have great procrastination. I have great procrastination too. I think everybody does, don't they? Maybe not. I also like to procrastinate about yeah, things I don't no, want no, to sure, do. Yeah, no, no, sure. About things I don't want to do. Yeah, but I think you're like, you're very driven and you're also very willing to put the time into something if if you can envision there being a result at the end. Whereas I'm very willing to put the time into something tomorrow. 
Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just like, I don't want to do it now. I'm watching Love Island. So what was your least favourite subject then? My least favourite was probably biology because, well, I had no interest in science, right? At all. But I just did it because I was like, you should do one science subject for your leaving. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. there were loads of things in, like that, that if I had decided to do X or Y in college, and you have to decide this in 50 or two years before you leave. So I was like, I have no idea what I want to do, but what if I want to do something for which I need I need a science well, subject? Well, mom wants you to be a teacher, so you would have needed science. She really wanted me to be a teacher. She did, yeah. So I did biology and I hated it. I just found it very dull. And my teacher also was convinced that I was crap and, and kept, as I've mentioned, I'm clearly bitter. <laughs> you are Kept very trying to get me to drop this. down to pass. Well, maybe you will... Um, discover or realise mom's dreams of being a teacher now in the next couple of weeks with this homeschooling or if you come over and give us a hand oh my god for a second a for a second I thought you were going like if if this like podcasting and writing doesn't work out for you no I like, no I'm 35 like, I'm not starting just, over again no I just meant between now and the next couple of weeks because honestly like this uh, this entire working at home and homeschooling and having other kids is an absolute nightmare like this it's not even like here's the amount of work you have to do during the day and it's all on the same app and it's just doable and then like tick the box. It is so complicated. Mm. I mean, I'm com- I am find it confusing. And then of course is the internet. Yeah, which keeps coming, coming in now. Oh. But it, like obviously, I wonder, I mean, obviously if this went on for another year, two years, three years, touch wood it won't. Mm-hmm. But if it did, I'm sure things would get a lot more streamlined. Well, I mean, like they'd have to. Because nobody sure. envisioned this, you know what I'm I mean? not sure, because I think it's fine for everybody who over the age of like nine, age, age of eight, you know what I mean? I think at that point you can get it, you can mm. understand they're all super tech savvy. It's like the six-year-old is having major issues. I mean, a part of me wonders if like, I mean, like I know it's really difficult for parents who kind of don't have the time to stay-at-home parent, if you know what I mean, who, yeah, like, what, who, who like have a, no, 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 but I was going to say, I wonder if for this time we should just all adopt the Scandinavian model of sending them to school when they're what, like nine or something. Yeah, I was talking with somebody with a German, one of my colleagues who's German, and she was saying in Germany, they don't start till they're like eight or nine and they go to school from nine till 12 and they're done, you know? And she was like, that would be a lot easier right now. But I mean, yeah. the thing is, their they're, they're lessons, well, Bo's lessons take probably the full day, because, but also because he just doesn't get it yet. You know what I mean? He doesn't yeah. get it and he needs a lot of helping and he's so distractible. And yeah. I mean, this is the same child who was caught filming Yoshi's, submitting a load of Yoshi videos of like... Twerking his with his Yoshi's. Various different Yoshi's play acting and submit it as his English. I mean, I have to credit him with good imagination. Mm-hmm. Good for him, yeah. Yeah. So what else? What else did you hate or love? I think I was really pissed off and as I mentioned, bitter about my kind of last two years in school up until very recently when, not that I necessarily started looking at it differently, but I just stopped caring as much. But I mean, let's get on to the good stuff because like the whole point is you did have these, you did have, you may not have been in the, in the like mean girls crew, but like you did have a good gang of girlfriends that you still have to this day, like very close gang girlfriends and you had tons of boyfriends. So, I mean, honestly, I think like there might have been Five or six guys I dated, but no, like it wasn't dozens. Rosemary, there were dozens, and there, oh mother God, there and I weren't. went through the list recently. Mother and I, you mother have little to be doing, as mother would say. We went through the list. Well, you called her up because you were saying, "How in God's name did they let you date a twenty-one-year-old when you were 11? 24 and I was fourteen. Okay, well, I had the I had the age difference correct. <laughs> okay, but like eleven's worse. <laughs> okay, go on. When you were fourteen, so riddle me that, then tell me about that. I don't even know how that happened. I was working in spa. Which was your favourite job ever. Oh my God, I loved it. I know you did. Have I mentioned before on this podcast how, so like I really loved it because you just got to chat to everyone, right? But I also really loved it because the power, I used to work on the deli counter and if people were mean to you, you could really just fuck their lunch. Like you could ruin everything. Okay, but not in a gross way. No, no, no. Sorry. No, no, no. Nothing gross. Well, gross because you wouldn't want to eat it, but like no. Basically, if somebody said to me, like if somebody was rude and they asked for like a turkey sandwich with egg mayonnaise, Right. And they were like snappy and they were on the phone or whatever. They would get so much egg mayonnaise. That's actually And then so I would cling revolting. film it up. The egg mayonnaise would be like spurting out all <laughs> over the cling so film. It was so disgusting. gross. But also after you cling filmed it, you then wrap it in the spar paper so they wouldn't be able to see it until they got to the car and started eating. <laughs> and then it'd be too late. They wouldn't come back. So like those That's kind of things. So petty. No, but like at least I wasn't spitting in it. I say that was where that, that began your lifelong affair with not a boy. Mayonnaise. But with a, Oh, mayonnaise. <laughs> no, with those pecan. Oh my God, the Cuisine de France maple pecan plats. Those, yes. I L U. I honestly, 
They were delicious. They, what do you mean they were? They were up and they were in your spending diaries up until the day before you left Ireland. Uh, I haven't had one of them in a, in a while. No, 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 no. That was I. So I graduated from them onto Brother Hubbard's similar walnut and cinnamon scroll. Are you having a laugh? This is literally, and I was also laughing at your spending diary this week as well, which was I spent six hundred dollars. Don't judge me. And I said to Don unbelievable she actually went she bought furniture she has like she's moved into a new house spent $600 living in Dublin going from breakfast to lunch to dinner she managed to spend 1400 euro on a weekly basis you know it's true I can't believe the face you're making I said it used to go like this massive lunch uh, avocado stopped at spar for snack on way to (laughs) office God, you've got a lisp now. You're so excited with these <laughs> snacks. Stop the spar for snacks. And it was sorry. Can I just say, yes. my my spending diaries are behind spending. a paywall. My spending diaries are behind a paywall for a reason. They are secret and for subscribers only. And I do not wish you to refer to them or reveal any of my secrets on the public podcast again. Sorry. <sighs> so annoying. So annoying. I'm trying to think. Did either of us ever get into big trouble in secondary school? I got detention once. No, I was trusted with like the keys of the school. I actually was, I spent my summer Absolute painting nerd. the school. Oh yeah, remember. I mean, literally trusted did with the keys of the school. you do it for free? No, I did it for like, I was paid for it. Oh, okay, good. But I mean, I was literally thinking At like, At the time I go. thought you were such a sucker about what you're doing it for free. No, of course I wasn't. I was paid for it. I mean, I don't think, I mean, I was paid like a, you know, pretty relatively normal rate, but like what a massive nerd. Sir, madam. But listen, that's very enterprising. What else have you been doing up in Kildare? Nothing. Hanging up at this on the cemetery roof, drinking. Imagining heat clipping and drinking. In fields. You. I would have loved it. No, no, but I'm what I'm saying is if you hadn't been painted the school, you wouldn't have been drinking in oh, fields. No, you would have no, been sitting no, at home no. reading heat clip for the fourth time. Making additional tiny pieces of FEMO food for my doll's house that never got built, but I had tons of furniture to put inside of it. Why didn't it get built? Oh, I kinda half built one in the end and then I went off. I started oh, going off it. Back of Philip McCabe off that. I know. I know, yeah. <laughs> It's not off the ground, you licked it. Oh, oh, but I do remember that I had, I went, I did a home ec. I've forgotten about that. This was now in fifth and sixth year when I decided I needed an easy class because I was like, this will be really easy now. And I, I'd heard it was really easy. And I was like, I'll just get do this now. And I'll. It sounds like me in the psychology. Well, it wasn't really easy. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, because it was things like, draw a diagram of the inside of your washing machine and then label every single part. And I was like, why would I need to do this? Like, I could actually just take There are the, people for that. But I just take the leaflet out of the back. Do you know what I mean? I would just like take it out of like the, whatever the care or the manual. RTFM, right? So it's actually ridiculous. And then anyway, and the teacher hated me, but I mean, I have to say I probably hated her too. And I would constantly get in fits of the giggles. She'd be doing the most serious demonstrations of like, you know, here's how to whisk a flamange or a blamange. I can't even remember. A flan, right? Whatever. And oh, I was just What's so boring. Of course, I got I, like, literally, it was the, my worst subject in my leaving cert, of course, typically. But I remember your woman Hang on, hated sorry. Us. Your worst subject, you get a B1? No, no, like I got a B3 or something. Hmm. I don't know. But like, she absolutely hated us all and she constantly was berating us and telling us all that we had no work ethic and Asians had good work ethics and we didn't and I remember even at the time back in the day going like this is not okay like she'd be like I think she had worked in Hong Kong for a year or six months or something and she was constantly telling us about like the Asians and they work and they study and they go home and they study and they study in their sleep and when they wake up they're studying and that's how they're the number one earners above even white people Asians are the most hardworking people. And I was like, this is not remotely normal. I remember I, had, I actually had an argument with her in the class, which like was very out of character for me. And after that, like that was a marked woman. She about this? hated me. No, just about, I can't even remember. Oh. Like, but I mean, I think at that point I was a bit, it was after transition year, you see. So yeah, I had yeah. been oh, like, yeah. I had been We all got a bit loosey-goosey. Yeah. yeah. And I think I was like, I don't really agree with this or I don't think we should, you know, talk like this but kind of thing. Isn't school so weird like that they're, there's no other situation in life, maybe in like a group setting with your boss, where you wouldn't put up your hand and go, I actually disagree with you. Do you know what I mean? But like nowadays you're told, right, that you should disagree with your boss, right? The power of like diverse thinking and all this kind of stuff, even though, you know, obviously you're going to, you're going to think about it twice. But yeah, I 100% agree with you. And like, how do you also teach your kids? Like, listen to this teacher, but if they tell you to do something... Remember the other day I was saying to Bo, what was it they said uh, Nash or Bo and Nash? They were trying to kill each other, basically, in the <laughs> pool. And then Bo was talking about school and he said, my teacher said, you know, blah, blah to me. And I said, if you, you know, would you stick your finger in the fire if your teacher told you this? And he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, like, I'm trying to explain to you. Now, I don't know that we have fires the way we, we used to talk about it. Like, mom was constantly rolling the Irish <laughs> Times to make... Um, 
those fire starters. She still is. She still is. Well, she and loves I said, to roll papers. Doesn't yeah, believe in fire lighters. No, she certainly doesn't. And I said to um, I said to Bo like Bo, if your teacher tells you to absolutely do something, you know, and you know it's the wrong thing to do, and you know it's mean. Oh yeah, would you bully somebody? I said Bo, if your teacher told you to bully somebody. Tell me what you're going to do. Well, I'm going to bully them, mom. If my teacher says to bully them, I'm going to bully them because that's, I'm always going to do what my teacher says. I was like, little maniac. I, I told him to give you the finger one day and he absolutely would not. He's no he, respect I'm, for me. I'm his favorite this week. He told me today, you're my favorite. I was like, thanks, small creepy. And did he say this week? That would have been even better. Yeah, he said, you were my favorite this week. <laughs> and then Chance came up behind him, you're not mine. I was like, thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot. <sighs> but anyway, yeah, it's hard like to think, you know, how do you and also teachers are not necessarily not not all teachers, but like not a lot of teachers are not willing to entertain. But I can also I can also imagine like how hard it must be, because if you start sort yeah. of engaging in debate or discourse, I mean, if I start engaging in it with my own kids, I'm like, this is not a this is not a conversation like this is I'm asking you to do this. Please yeah. do it. Yeah. And like also like especially in secondary school, you have 40 minutes to do this one subject, you have to get X, Y, Z done in that 40 minutes. And if somebody goes, do you not think X, Y, Z, like, yeah, you don't have time to get into like a critical discussion of Pythagoras' theorem because you're like, no, this is what you need to know for your exam. That is the main thing that we have to drill into you from the minute one that you get here. So it is all the curriculum's problem, but it was just, yeah, I, like, like I think I found that aspect of it really difficult. But you know, what I got detention for was we had a free class, so our teacher was sick and there was another teacher sitting in. So, you know, you would just do your own work or you would do whatever. Like, we didn't have an actual lesson. And I went to the bathroom and on on my way to the bathroom, I bumped into my music teacher who was like, how are you getting on with your piece for blah, blah, blah? And I was like, oh, you know, it still needs a lot of work. I think blah, blah, blah. And she was like, well, what are you doing now? And I was like, oh, oh I have a free class. And she was like, well, why don't you come in and practice now? And I went, okay, and just came in and started practicing. But obviously didn't go back and tell the other teacher, I'm going in to practice my piano. And the other teacher then was like where like where the hell is Rosemary gone she went to the toilet 20 minutes ago I didn't come back until the end of class and she was like where have you been and basically I got in so much trouble but like obviously common sense I should have gone back to tell her but in my head I, w- I think I must have been like the teachers are, have like a, a neural link yeah, they all or, know or I mean it wouldn't have been the hardest thing in the world the teacher will tell the other teacher but I think she thought that I had already come to ask her or something oh, you know okay. what I mean like so, just so it was just it was just, it was a total misunderstanding but I got a detention for that. I was in a rage. But didn't you also get a, like a detention essay? You were very bold. That wasn't a detention essay. That was, I was talking. I Too was much. Talking. Yeah. Too much. I mean, story talking. of my life. You know, um, I used to always come back every September and be like, this year I'm going to be, I'm not, I'm not going to be the one who puts her hand up. I'm but not going to talk But you know what, maybe it's class. mom's I'm fault. Gonna... Like mom's a desperate talker. She does love to talk. But mom also, have you noticed whenever she tries to get off the phone from you, she goes, listen, I have to go. Oh. I'm with Elizabeth. But listen, did you get that thing I sent you? And you're like, do you have to go or do you not have to go? Oh, well, I mean, she used to do that whenever we leave anybody's house as well. Do you know, oh, you'd be like, I'm you'd be not, standing I'm not in, You'd be standing leaving. in the hall for 20 minutes. Yeah, it's like, I'm not going. And then she'd be like, so come on, annoying. come on, come on the hall. You're like, I'm not coming in the hall till you're in the car. Yeah. Right? But anyway, yes, I was talking in class and I got given, I think it was geography and my teacher asked me to write an essay. I think it was on the history of rocks. She was like, it has to be about geography. And I was like, what do you want me to write about? And she's like, the history of rocks. And I think I wrote a piece about like a rock family. You're such a brat. I know. You're still a brat. I know. I was like, I'm going to subvert this. this well, you have subverted my children. There are many things you've told them that I have like been like, please don't tell them those things. Like what? Do you remember the time, like years ago, I played that that Australian train yes, ad for them? Yes, I remember. It. Basically, we were sitting, we were sitting at the kitchen table, and I was looking at my laptop, and they were like, "Play a video on YouTube." And the only thing that I could think of that even looked like a cartoon at the time, I panicked. I was like, "I'll play them this ad called Dumb Ways to Die." Unbelievable! <laughs> it's basically all these different ways that you, that you can die by being stupid, and the whole thing is like, "Stay away from trains," because it's just another dumb way you can die. Anyway, the song is like dumb ways to die and then we went to do you remember TJ Maxx and Nash spent the whole time walking around singing this really loud yeah but I also remember he spent then the next couple of weeks going mom so if I stab myself will I die if I fall over here will I die if I I was like if I stick a fork in the toaster yes there's a lot of them yeah I was like you're actually dead meat I know but listen so basically it was done at that point your education was well spent my education was well spent I always imagined that I'd like to go to like 
the institute. But then I remember one of my friends went to the institute and I went in and met him for lunch one day and I was like, they all seem like knobs. And then I think I was a bit glad that I didn't. Oh my God, no Did. judgment. I'd love to hear other people's stories about what they remember from school and any sports oh, so teams I. they were on. Mm. Any sports teams you thought you were on and are now realising you weren't. Because Don just came in and announced <laughs> that I definitely told him I was on the volleyball team. And on their was- first date. <laughs> Pretty sure I did not on our first date. I think he was being mean. I hope. That is probably something that I would tell a man on my first date. Be like, men love sports. I was on the volleyball team and I love Star Wars. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all so much for listening to this episode of not without my sister. Oh yeah, if you do have any school stories, you can email us notwithoutmysis at gmail.com or you can send them to us on Instagram at notwithoutmysister, I think on Instagram. Confusing. Yeah, not me. without my sister. Not without my sister on Instagram. I'm on Instagram at Rosemary McCabe. Oh, I'm Beatrice McCabe. We both have A's, A's in our max. Blame our dad. And please give us a review because I love oh, yeah. reading them, basically. Yeah. If you have an iPhone or an iPad, go on to Apple Podcasts, give us five stars, write something nice. Don't give us any less than five stars. If you feel inclined to give us any less than five stars, just do not do it. <laughs> Save yourself. <laughs> oh my God, democracy in action. I know. Thank you so much. Well, listen, I live in America now. Thank you so much for listening and we will catch you next week. Bye. Not Without My Sister is edited by Liam Garrity. Sound and original music by Don Kirkland and our original illustration is by Lindsay Nielsen. Not Without My Sister is a member of The Warren, the home of great Irish podcasts. As is my podcast, Meet Your Maker. You'll find more great shows at thewarren.ie.